Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to go through a game with you and the checkmate was just really beautiful. I mean, I'm going through my in games at the moment and also checkmate patterns. And this one's actually showing a bit of growth. So uh, I'm just going to go through this game. So I'm just opening up the in the beginning, just trying to get, you know, development moves, the queen and the bishop out. And I'm just pushing out, trying to get control of the center. And he plays the French variation. Play the advance. So the advance is when you're trying to push forward and get more space. Uh, usually the French variation, black wants to try and target this pawn as well. So all of a sudden he wants to break open. And it'll be a mistake here if we do take because he can take back and then increase his development with tempo. So, okay, so we defend, he attacks our pawn. So this is what I'm talking about. The French variation just attacks this pawn. And we've whoever gets that pawn or defends it off uh, generally tells you who's going to win the game okay so now we're pinning the knight so he can't actually attack the pawn so this is a great way and he defends the pin so he gets rid of the pin and another thing too when it, when a pin happens like this this knight can't move but at the same time there's no real threat so this is looks like a big threat here but the thing is it's not really doing anything i mean when you start as a beginner or you know, as I've been, as I've been playing as well, I've been, I always thought this was a big threat, but really it doesn't threaten anything, because the thing is, uh, it's defended by a knight. So any piece that's defended by a pawn, uh, it really can't be attacked by another piece unless it's just a fair trade. So just something to bear in mind. It's not actually a bigger threat than what it is. It's just it it does stop the, this. That's the other point. It just stops you from attack, uh, defending the pawn. So just helps you defend the pawn. All right, so anyway, so we take for the trade, and he goes up. So if he didn't go for the pin, uh, we'd wreck his pawn structure as well. Not necessarily the worst thing either. Okay, so we develop, and he puts his queen out. So he probably looks like he wants to castle. It's a bit strange because this looks quite solid. Uh, on this side, his pawn structure's already been destroyed. So it just sort of, Probably the wrong choice to castle that side, so. Uh, we moved the pawn up forward. What, what do we do that for? Looks like a wasted move on my behalf. Uh, but at the moment, if I was to guess, I'd have to go b4 next. And then just start challenging the c5 square. And try and attack these weak pawns. I mean, once you start getting these pawns here on their own, uh, they'll start becoming weak. And then that's what you want to do. You start with a game plan. In the middle start, uh, middle parts of the game. Okay, so we push forward for c5. He, took, he attacks through the center. And we just go for an advance. Advance our queen forward. Now, our bishop's still not advanced here, but we can go forward here. Our opponent here has forgotten about his other, his other pieces. If we just castle now, move our bishop out. We've linked up our rooks and we've castled. So we've got king safety almost under the way. And also... All our pieces are developed and our opponent isn't so just something to bear in mind uh, he does move b8 which is not a bad move but at the same time it does waste his time getting his pieces out and notice how this pawn really stops he's developing like he's knight can't his bishop can't come here so when his bishop does come out it's going to come here which means his knight's got nowhere to go and if he ever goes here i'll be happy to take and then he can double his pawns on the h file which will be it's horrible for him. So we've just got a, such a great sp uh, space advantage here. So he tries to open up. He's trying to put some pressure on, trying to get rid of this pawn. And then we're trying to put pressure on this bishop. So this bishop's really got nowhere to go, except for back. And just, black's really cramped up. And some players really don't like a cramped position. I don't actually mind it. Once you play a certain, certain different openings, you actually start getting used to cramp positions okay so we actually develop our bishop uh, this is what you call a battery so we're targeting here and could have been checkmate if he hadn't moved his pawn forward I mean he would have went back here but then we could have put the queen here and then that would have been checkmate so but now the queen's defended everything so we have to run away always retreat towards the bishop run back he's going to take our pawn here uh, he's trying to open up the center he's got control of the center here actually this is not actually too bad for black 
I mean, he's actually fixing up his cramped position now. The knight can come out. So maybe I misplaced this, misplayed this a little bit. And now we trade. And he under he undefends the pawn with when he attacks the queen. And then we get the bishop as well. So we're actually equal material in this stage. Uh, this is what you call a backward pawn. Uh, two of them is what you call hanging pawns, okay? So, hanging pawns are when there's no pawn here that can go and defend here. And also this side as well, so they can't actually... Another pawn can't defend on the other file as well. So an isolated pawn would be if this pawn wasn't here, and this pawn was on its own, okay? So no pawn being able to defend, defend it. But these are hanging pawns because there's no pawn here, no pawn here. And it's definitely weak, they can be weak. And very easy to misplay as well. Okay, so we're just trying to attack the center. And now we're trying to open up the rook. So this is really nice. And this is this is really deadly now. And before you know it, you know, the queen can actually come up here. He's got a lot of squares. So probably not this square because of the pawn. But we can go up forward and then prepare for this move. And he's just dying down here to the pawn. But as you can see, our king's very safe. And uh, his king is not. So he hasn't really got much defense here. And now we're targeting and we're actually threatening to take the rook both ways. So if he doesn't move, we can just take his rook here. But if he moves his rook back here, then we can move here and then get his rook anyway. So, so he defends his rook with his other rook. And we're going to attack the rook here. Just trying to push up forward. And the thing is with this move, if he just takes here, we can take here. If he takes here, I guess he can take here. We had ideas of the queen here, but the knight really puts it in jeopardy, that move. So maybe I misplayed this as well. I could have actually prepared it slightly different, but I had to be careful where I was going to move the pawns. Because I don't want to create my uh, danger as well for myself. Then we go back. He takes. We're going to attack the queen. Try and knock the queen off the where it's where it's sitting. We finally find this move. And sacrificing, checking, just just pushing the just putting pressure on the king. Just not really giving our opponent any time to breathe. And whatever you do checks like this, you can just gobble up material as well. And it's very frustrating for your opponent. If you can frustrate your opponent like this, they're more likely to do blunders as well. So as you can see, I'm just keeps checking. And I collected the, the knight as well. And defended the queen with the rook. And then, yeah, just had to find the safe move in this position here. It was probably pretty scary if I went here. Because he could probably go here and go here, and then he could take, possibly take here. I don't know. It looked very scary. Because I had to be careful of bank rank checkmates as well. So now we're up a knight and a pawn, so it's not looking too bad. So just here now. So often a lot of situations with a pawn and the knight, you you get a lot of hook mates, but this isn't this isn't what a hook mate's going to be. I'm actually planning on doing another mate now. We're moving the king up the board. And this is another thing too. Don't just do checks just for the sake of it too. Because I'm moving my king up for a reason. Because I want to get my king up and put pressure on my opponent's king. So him just doing checks here is actually giving me time to make moves. While he's not focusing on getting a pass pawn. And that's another thing too. When you're going into an end games, you want to focus on pass pawns as well. Not so much when you're up in material. So he should have actually traded here. And this is the checkmate. So this is a beautiful checkmate. It's called a Vukovic checkmate. And the knight covers here. And the rook covers these squares. So the, yes, it's just, it's just very beautiful. And 
the most important piece is the king or a pawn that defends the rook so yeah it's just really nice to look at anyways guys i'll see you in the next video and yeah i'll do another checkmate video coming up soon bye guys